everyone, so the other day I came across a really powerful article on Facebook and it was about parenting. And not only did it really get me thinking and inspire me, it also gave me a refreshing reminder about the importance and role as a parent. Now, this article was actually written for parents. However, this video that I'm making is not just for parents. It's for anyone that has any contact with children because whether we are a parent or a step parent or a grandparent or a cousin or an aunt or uncle or a nanny or a bus driver or you know a neighbor if you're in contact with children you have a role a role to set an amazing example and help children grow and become amazing powerful and happy, healthy, well-rounded, grounded individuals. Now, before I start this video, I want to explain, by no means am I a perfect parent. I get things wrong all the time, and there are plenty of times I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing, and I'm completely freaking out, just trying to find a solution that's going to work for me and Rocco. I find being a parent at times extremely overwhelming, but also extremely rewarding. So I wanted to take this article and share it with you, but also I guess try and see if I can apply some practical steps to it and also help people who are non-parents see how incredibly important they are in any children's role, whether you're a parent or not. Now in this article, which I will share in the link below, it talks about the disturbing studies about children, you know, the incredible increase of children diagnosed with ADHD that one in five children are diagnosed with a mental illness. There is a 200% increase in youth suicide between the ages of 10 and 14. And there is a 37% increase in teen depression. Now, if those statistics don't wake you up um, and realize how important it is that we pay attention to our children's needs and the younger generation was going to take this world to the next place, I don't know what else I can say, but for me, it was a refreshing wake up call to really respect the role of being a parent. So they, this article actually recommended a range of different steps to help children, you know, I guess heal or potentially never have to deal with some of these issues. And it said that the children these days are digitally distracted, um, don't get enough sleep, aren't eating the right food, um, have a, um, a sedentary um, indoor lifestyle and um, some have indulgent parents that don't know how to say the word no um, and some of those I'm guilty of myself but it gave some fantastic tips as to how to break this cycle how to break these habits and how to step into a more empowered place as a parent or as an adult in a child's world so the first step was Focus on what the child needs more than what they want. It is perfectly fine to hear the word no. Yes, there can be a complete and utter meltdown, a complete tantrum. You get hissed at or spat at or kicked. Um, hang in there and get through it. Ask for other adult help around you if you're really struggling. Like the other day when I was at the hairdresser and Rocco was having a tantrum, I asked someone to, if this was normal, I asked them for ideas to help me. Um, do not be afraid or embarrassed to ask for help. We are not geniuses of being parents and we all have our own triggers and our own like struggles and weaknesses. So learn to say no to your children. It is healthy for them to hear the word no. They're going to hear the word no as an adult or a teenager plenty of times. We need to coach them and prepare them for being able to accept hearing the word no and dealing with it and moving on with it. The next recommendation is to make sure that you spend time with children outdoors. Spend time at the beach or spend time going for a bushwalk. Um, or spend time near a lake. Make sure you are out connecting with nature. As you are walking through a park, look at the leaves, talk about the birds, talk about the weather, look at the grass, look at the flowers, talk about like the wind. Make sure you are making children aware of the environment around us and also how incredibly important it is. One little thing that I do with Rocco is if we're walking down our street and we see some rubbish, we will always make sure that we pick it up and, sh and pay respect and homage to the environment because we do not want that destroying our oceans. Make kids aware of the importance of nature and taking care of it, but also how nature is important to our own soul development. 
The next recommendation is to have no phone zones. Now, I think this is a fantastic idea, but an incredibly hard one. Um, it is often, if, you know, in this day and age, we don't work nine to five. We're expected to take after hours phone calls and to check in on our emails. However, what a great tip that I heard from a parent is they actually have a box. And I actually have a box now myself where when they come home for the first couple of hours of being home together as a family, particularly around dinner time, everyone in the house has to pop their phone in a box and they are not allowed to open that box and take the phones out until the whole family agrees and it must be after they have connected as a family. The next recommendation is to play games with your kids. Play snakes and ladders, play cards, play snap, play peekaboo, um, play I Spy, play Monopoly. You know, there are so many games out there, board games for so many different ages, and you never know how much fun you will actually have. I know at times when I've got lots of things on my mind, I just want to you know, jump on my laptop, but Rocco will force me to play snakes and ladders. You know what, a couple of minutes into it, I've actually switched off myself and I'm actually really enjoying it and I'm learning more about who Rocco is, what he likes, what he doesn't like and what he needs from me and it is really actually fulfilling. The next tip in this article is to give kids chores. Now I think that's a fantastic idea but I also think we should give kids chores with deadlines. They need to understand the responsibilities that come with their chores. If they don't get their chores done by a certain time, there are consequences of that. And by them not stepping up and taking ownership of their chores, they may have an impact or a flow on effect to other family members. Now also giving kids chores, I think it's also important to stop and take the time, particularly when kids are younger, to explain the responsibility of those chores. For example, if you don't feed the dogs, the dogs are going to be really hungry and really unhappy. Or if you don't pick up your toys at the end of the day, it could be dangerous because someone could walk in and slip over and hurt themselves. Or another great idea for kids, which is something I do with Rocco in trying to explain to him the importance of picking things up and putting them away, is talking about the calm energy of a clean, tidy, organized home. It's amazing the impact when we actually stop and take the time to explain to children why they really do get it. And now Rocco actually says to me after he's put his toys away, he says, look, mama, nice, clean, calm energy. And he actually respects it and appreciates it. And I'm finding that I'm having to ask him a little bit less often to please put his toys away. And I'm getting a lot better, a lot less pushback from him when I do have to ask him. So try and take the time to give the kids chores with deadlines and explain why that chore is so important and it's so important that they take responsibility for that chore. Empower your children. The next tip in the article for children is to make sure you have a consistent sleep routine. Kids should go to bed within a certain time each night of the week. Obviously as kids get older they might be able to stay up a little bit later on a Friday night or a Saturday night but they need to be reasonably consistent. Now to me that seems like an absolute no-brainer because even as adults when we are sleep deprived we are no good physically, intellectually or emotionally. So can you imagine what a little tiny human being who's growing every day experiences when they're sleep deprived or they don't have happy healthy nighttime habits. The next tip is to help children process emotions. Now, this is probably one that I'm going to elaborate on a little bit more. When children are having tantrums or when children are sad or upset, we need to help them go through that feeling, not over it, not under it, but through it. Explain to them, it's okay to feel this way. This feeling isn't gonna stay with you for very long. Let them feel it, let them name it, let them acknowledge it, and let them understand that with time it is going to pass and that they will come out the other side, they will be okay when they get out the other side, and they will also become stronger and wiser. I think this is also incredibly important to ask children how do they think other people will feel. Kids need to understand that other people have feelings and emotions and if someone else is feeling sad because whether the child did something to them or not, that they have their own processing and they need to respect that person's processing of certain emotions as well. We cannot all be happy 100% of the time. It is okay to be sad and when we are sad, it means we are going to be able to appreciate those moments where we are really happy so much more. Now the next two are actually purely my own little tips um, and that is to teach children manners, respect and gratitude. Teach children to look people in the eye and say hello, how are you? 
teach children to sit at the table and eat properly with a knife and fork. Teach children the importance of gratitude. At the end of every night, Rocco and I will lie in bed together and talk about the highlights of their day, of our day that is, and we will go through the small little simple things that put a smile on our face that day. Even if we've had a really bad day and even if we've had a tantrum or a meltdown that evening, it is something that is incredibly important and it is a beautiful healthy nighttime habit routine that we've created together that helps Rocco fall asleep. Now one tip if you're struggling to teach children any of those things is to communicate to people around you that we're really trying to work on our manners because you never know someone else if you let them know that what you're trying to do might have a better way of getting through to the children and explaining the importance of manners or gratitude or respect themselves. I know there have been times where I have tried so hard to explain something to Rocco and how important it is that he do this and then someone like a neighbour or a friend of mine or his own grandparents have said, hey Rocco, you know it's incredibly important to do this because blah blah blah. Rocco suddenly now gets it. He's not as defensive in hearing it from me, he's heard it from another person, a third party, and he starts to take it that little bit more seriously. Now on that note of talking about gratitude, respect and manners, it's also incredibly important for children to learn to say the words, I'm sorry. But not just I'm sorry, but say it with meaning. Look the person in the eye and say their name and explain why they are saying sorry and show empathy and compassion and remorse. Too often, you know, kids get to say, I'm sorry, but they don't really mean it because they don't really understand what they're saying sorry for or why. We need to stop and take the time to really get this through to a child, what they've done wrong and why they need to step up, take ownership and apologize. And then the final tip, that I'm recommending and actually this lady recommends as well and that is to connect with children. We can never smother our children too much with affection, with cuddles, with kisses and telling them how much we love them and how much they mean to us and how incredibly important they are in our lives. No children child is ever going to complain that they heard that too much. Now I hope this video helps you in some way or inspires you in some way to be a more present parent, to be a more responsible parent and like this article simply did for me, gave me a bit of a wake up call, a refreshing reminder of how valuable we are in our children's growth and development. And as I said, this video is not just for parents, it's for anyone who has any type of contact with children in their life because you can be an incredibly powerful role model in them. And I think about the people and the adults in my life that have served me in helping me develop and grow and become smarter or stronger or more aware and they haven't necessarily always been my parents. They've been a godparent or a neighbour or a family friend or someone that I just simply met in a briefing passing moment. We all have an impact on these little human beings growing around us and we should never disrespect that. Anyway, that's it for this video. <laughs> I'm wishing everyone a fantastic week and please let me know what you think of this video and if you have any other tips for any other people out there who like myself at times struggle with the responsibility of being a great parent as well as the pressure of being a great parent. Ciao for now. Thanks for watching.